Hello, Novi. Uh, welcome to episode seven of Cultureverse. Hey. Uh, I'm with Caden, obviously. We have two more broadcasts. Next week, we will be bringing in a guest, and then the week after that, it's just be me and Caden yep. for our final run. And then uh, I'm gone. But so uh, I have our first topic. Let's hop right into it. I'm very excited about. If you know me, I'm I'm a huge movie guy. So for our first topic, it's just all the upcoming movies. I try to stray away from you know, like Marvel and superhero movies because me mm-hmm. and Caden always geek out about that. <laughs> so for our first movie uh, that I'm probably most excited for, it is Oppenheimer's Christopher uh, or Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Yeah, I'm Kaden, excited for yeah. that too. What do you, What are your thoughts? I, I'll let you go first. So you know, I I saw the trailer and like the trailer looks really deep and dark. Like it, it really yeah. does. And because like the story is it's deep it's very and dark. dark. Yeah. Because yeah. well, Oppenheimer, while developing the bond, it drove him to madness. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and like the stat, the cast is stacked. The cast is nuts. It's it's the insane. Cast is nuts. Even Josh Peck is in it. Yeah, Josh, and even uh, Roderick from the original Diary of Wimpy Kids. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah there's yeah. like some wild cast members in there. I know, but like it's everybody that like we know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, you That's have Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, uh, and playing Oppenheimer himself is Killian Murphy, yeah. who a lot of people know as Tommy Shelby from Peaky Blinders. He was also in a bunch of other Christopher Nolan movies. He was That's, Bane also. No, that was Tom Hardy. I mean, no. He, Scarecrow. Scarecrow. He was Scarecrow, yeah. 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 Uh, think about Christopher Nolan. He always loves working with his mo- uh, with the same actors, mm-hmm. uh, such as he's done movies with Christian Bale, obviously uh, Tom Hardy, Killian Murphy. Uh, I think he's even done two math- movies with Matthew McConaughey, something like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, great movie. I cannot wait. I'm excited. Same. Uh, trailer looks great. Yeah, Comes out in a couple of months too, which I was not expecting. When's it come out? July twenty seventh, something like that. You know they actually dropped like like or they didn't drop like they recreated the Trinity test. Oh, this yeah. guy Christopher Nolan blew up parts of a set for that's his movie. Crazy, wild. But uh, that's it for Oppenheimer. The next movie we have Killers of the Flower Moon by Martin Scorsese. Uh, for those who don't know, Martin Scorsese is just he's just a cult classic guy. And uh, I'm I'm really excited for this one too. You have Robert De Niro. It could be his final movie since he is getting a little bit older. Leonardo DiCaprio uh, as the two main characters, and then Jesse Palmans, I think is a side character. Mm. Uh, some other famous actors. I don't. I mean, I do kind of know what it's about. I read the book. It's kind of like it's a classic Scorsese movie, if that makes sense. You know, uh, it's very mob driven. A lot of organized mm. crime in there. Scorsese with Goodfellas, The Departed, Casino. Yeah, we know he can make a good mob movie. What about? I don't know if you've even heard of this. This is like a very unknown. Movie. Yeah, actually, I haven't heard of this, but like, I, I, I'm interested in like those like crime boss. Yeah. You know, like I'm actually I like those. Yeah, a lot. I, yeah, I love those. <clears throat> I might have to check out the trailer for that one. Yeah, uh, the trailer hasn't come out yet. No, uh, no, it doesn't come out for a okay. little bit. My bad if I'm now like just taking up no, the conversation. No, 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 that's yeah. fine. I told <laughs> I you, you, you got to carry this one. <laughs> yeah. You got to carry this one. Uh, so for a third movie, it is Bo is Afraid, made by the same people who made Hereditary in Midsummer. I want to say I've heard that name. Like Bo is Afraid. I'm pretty sure I've heard. Yeah, that yeah. Name. I saw a couple. I saw a trailer for it like uh, literally like a couple of weeks ago, and I was watching it. It's like with Joaquin Phoenix, and then the girl plays Holly from The Office, and I'm like. Wow. wow, this looks nuts. And it says, like, brought to you by the same people who made Hereditary and Midsummer. And those are some very deeply disturbed, twisted movies. Mm. A lot of controversy around mm-hmm. them. But also great award-winning movies. The, yeah. Those movies went, went crazy. Uh, we have the Barbie movie, too, with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Oh, uh, man. I'll yeah. Watch, I'll watch that. <laughs> I'll watch that. Anyway. I'll watch that for sure. Not for Margot Robbie. I'll watch it for Ryan Gosling and Michael Sarah. I'll mm-hmm. tell you that much. That's going to be. That's gonna it be just fun. looks stupid, but like, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> it's like not something I'm going to see in the theaters, of course. Yeah. But like, I might throw it out in the background when it comes on a streaming service, bro. Mm-hmm. And it, it just might just might be funny. Because that cast. That cast is sick. Stacked. That cast is sick, too, for, especially for like a kind of like kiddish thing, like just like PG movie. Yep. Uh, so we have, uh, after that, we have Tarantino announces his 10th and final movie with a female lead. Another one of my favorite directors, uh, Tarantino, who's made cult classic films like Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and Glorious Bastards, Django, so on, so on. Uh, I can't wait for that. That's going to be great. He always, his dialogue is just unmatched. Mm-hmm. The way he writes the scripts and the way they always end, it, I have not seen a bad movie by him. Uh, all the nine movies he's made. <clears throat> That's valid. Not a bad movie. Yeah, I mean, sometimes these people just have, like, a craft. You know? Yeah. 
and it's you got to respect, like, respect it. You, yeah. you can't do anything but respect it. I know you can't. Yeah. I I see that the FNAF movie is on here. Yeah. You, I'm going yeah, to let you, you know, take that one. I'm going to let you take that one. You know, I love Five Nights at Freddy's of the Lord. I used to play the game under, under like, my bed covers late at night when I was, like, in second grade. I was a unit, bro. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, so I was the same thing. with you. that game terrified me. Man, it was Especially scary. the fourth one. I was just about to say, the fourth one, you run over to that door, You as soon as you open up, flashlight, oh, man, it's terrifying. You hear the breathing, you're like, is there somebody breathing? I can't tell you, flash your flashlight. And then and they come at you. Yeah, and you're like, ah! scary. You're like, I, I literally, because I remember they put it on, they put all four, five, actually. Yeah, five. Mobile games, and they're all mobile games. Yeah, and they put them on, they put them on Xbox a couple years back. Really? Yep, I tried playing it, couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I got so scared in the fourth one, bro. The fourth one is my favorite. Yeah, the fourth one is... Uh, I feel like the one I replayed the most was the second one. Yeah, I did replay Yeah, I replayed the second one, but if we're going with four, uh, favorites, I am going to have to go with the fourth one because also, like, the story in that is also yeah. really, really good because you get to see the bite of 83 or 87. Mm -hmm. I forgot which one. Same thing, three gets a lot of hate because three was very different from the first two. Yeah, it was. But uh, the story for that was like you know, all about like you know, the main villain, like yeah. William Afton, and how he became he's like the purple guy. Yeah. And how he got locked into the spring trap suit and everything. Mm -hmm. That had a great story to it, but a lot of hate. Feel bad. But uh, still, just, just a great game. And Scott Cathlon, I think that's how you say his last name, he paved the way for indie horror games. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of games try like, to replicate that and copy that. Yeah, they do. And yeah. He. Yeah, hundred percent. I think Five Nights at Freddy's is probably one of the cornerstones for horror games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Especially in our generation. Yeah, especially in our generation. Every, everybody knew about Five Nights at Freddy's. Mm -hmm. Even lot. if you didn't play it, yeah. you heard about you've heard that name. Yeah, everywhere. like Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, oh yeah, like no, I never played it, but like, like I've heard about it. Yeah, exactly. insane. So we have the movie starring uh, Matthew Lillard. I think yes. that's his last name. Yes. Uh, he was one of the main villains in the first Scream movie. He was uh, shaggy. Uh, he was. That's how I. He was <laughs> that's, shaggy. That's when we first probably saw him. It was yeah. Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, first time I saw him was yeah, Scooby. Yeah, Scooby yeah. Doo. He played Shaggy. I only know him from Scream. After that, same. Uh, I like him though. I do too. Yeah. He's a, he's I've never so seen like him in anything else, so I guess he is kind of more like, like, like unknown actor. Mm -hmm. I've seen clips of some other stuff, and yeah. it's pretty interesting. Yeah, where he has like blue hair or something, something I, like, like in like in a movie. Don't know what the movie's called, but uh, <coughs> I, don't know, I like him. Yeah. He's a goofy, funny guy, but I don't know if I feel like he could really play William Afton as the main villain, the creator of you know the Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, he could play a serious guy. Yeah, yeah, and then I've got uh, the other guy's name who's playing. I forgot the character he's playing, but uh, this guy who plays PETA in Hunger Games. I yeah, I forgot his name, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he's going to be in two. It seems like those two are the leads for that movie. Uh, so, yeah, that's it for our first topic. We have all those movies coming up. Anything else you want to say? Uh, no, just that I'm actually really excited, and I... I want to see a trailer for this. Like, I really want to see a trailer. Yeah, well, a trailer got leaked for the FNAF movie. Did you not hear about that? Oh, actually. Yeah. I it, heard it was, like, unfinished, though. Yeah, it was unfinished. It was, like, a little minute and, like, 45-second little clip. But, like, it was still just amazing. What have people been saying? I don't know. I only watched, like, 30 seconds of it. Uh, I, c I couldn't watch it. I, I couldn't watch them, but people were like, "Oh, like, like, now, like, like, like this kind of confirms like, like how hope, like how like our hopes are high." I think the only problem people have are how the animatronics look. But it's like you can't really, you can't really be judging it from a trailer that got yeah. leaked. Like it's, it's not, not even stuff, like fully finished project. Like, not yeah. everything's fully CGI in, yeah. and you know they, uh, they uh, what's it called? Oh, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I yeah, I don't know why they're trying to judge it off that because like it's not even finished and it was leaked. Like I don't know what people like expected. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like the issue. Yeah. That people like 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 for example, uh, well actually no, we'll actually talk about that in the third topic. But since it's unfinished, you shouldn't use any. You should you should take everything you see on there with a grain of salt. Like yeah, because since it's not done, it's kind of just like. You know, you shouldn't really expect too much from an unfinished leak. That's the biggest thing. It's, it's it was leaked. It's not even officially out. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, people need to chill out. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I I know exactly what you're saying. All right, so topic two, I'm gonna let you carry that. All right, so uh, for topic two, 
I know we try to stay away from Marvel, but as they just they just keep crawling back because obviously yeah. there's a lot. It's to talk a big about. franchise. It's a very big franchise, and there's a lot to talk about every time. And Guardians of the Galaxy, I haven't seen it yet. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. But I've been hearing tremendous things. Uh, I've been hearing tremendous things about it. Uh, obviously, with Will Putner's. I think that's I think that's how you say it. I have no clue, but uh, I heard he has a tremendous performance in it as Adam Warlock. Uh, a lot of people have been calling it. Uh, I lost my train of thought again. Adam Warlock. Adam Warlock. Okay. Um, oh yeah, a lot of people have just been calling it like a classic Marvel movie. Like mm-hmm. it's like a refresh of what Marvel used to be, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like a refresh of what Marvel used to be. People are loving it. Uh, apparently, there's like a very sad part in it, so I think a character may die. I've heard. I've heard there were a few sad parts. I don't know yeah. who. I don't know who, but dies. My my guess has always been like based on the trailer. Please obviously, don't say it. I'm telling you, bro. Based <laughs> on the trailer, the trailer looks like it focuses a lot on Rocket. Rocket. Uh, okay, it's, I, know, it's, I feel like I might. I feel like he's gonna bite the dust. Uh, but I also feel like Drax is too because of the way Mantis was reacting in one of the trailers. Like, obviously, oh, here's the thing with Mantis. It's either she felt some. She <clears throat> she touched. <clears throat> wow, sorry. She touched someone else and felt their pain, or. Uh, Dragons died because they were always the closest. Yeah, that's what I was always thinking. Like the way she reacted, I was like, "Wow, she's not happy. Like she's really, really torn yeah. apart." About never really. Plus, you never seen like any of these characters like that, other than mm-hmm. when uh, Groot died and then he came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, what was another thing? Was like, uh, but well, obviously James Gunn is getting a lot of praise for this. People are calling us. This, this is the I, like I've been seeing memes like on TikTok, Instagram. People are calling this the best Marvel movie since Spider Man No Way Home. Really? That's how like it's living up to the hype of Spider Man No Way Home. Uh, it just looks it just looks fantastic. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very. This is like the first Marvel movie I'm actually giddy like to go see. Yeah, like, I actually heard it was people been saying it's better than Endgame. I know. Wow. That's a crazy that's, statement. That's a crazy thing to compare to. That's bro. what I'm Everyone saying. Everyone was crazy. Because Endgame was just because when you saw Infinity War and then you walked out of that theater and you're like, oh my God, Thanos just killed like half the population. I know. Of the they entire just ended like, it there. What's next? And you had to wait an crazy. entire year for it to, mm. you know, like to see what happens next. Yep. And, you know, absolutely after Endgame kind of went down. So yeah. No Way Home was good. But so that just kind of begs the question. Is Marvel coming back? I think, to be honest, if you ask me, I think it was just the touch of James Gunn. That's what I think. Yeah. That's honestly what I'm thinking. Because, like... This guy's killing it right now. He's man. killing it. He's just you know? killing it, dude. But, like, I I, I, I agree, yeah. you know? Plus, this is the last movie I think he's signed on to direct for Marvel. Yeah, it is. And this is the last Guardians of the Galaxy. It is. And it's... It's definitely the touch of James Gunn. Because... Yeah. They're... Okay, okay. Here's the thing. Now, James Gunn's work in this one could be like a path for other directors to like understand yeah. what they want to do, kind of. So maybe if you want to think about it in that aspect, but we'll have to see what's coming next for Marvel. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I couldn't even tell you, man. I just, whenever something drops from Marvel, I hear about it and then I hear the results. And if I really want to see it, I'll go see it. But, uh, I have, I really have no clue. The Marvels, I think. Yeah. I we, think we talked. Excuse me. Excuse me, podcast. <laughs> 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 but, uh, <laughs> like we said, we talked about Marvels. Mm-hmm. I'm not really feeling that. I'm not either. Yeah, I could care less for Marvel. But that's next. So what I, I feel like So back I, on the downhill. Yeah, probably, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. You know. Which I kinda hate to say for Marvel, because yeah. like, you know, that's something we grew up on. Like I remember like in third grade going to see uh The Winter Soldier and then you know how great that movie was and then how Marvel just kept on building up from that. That's when like all the stories started to get more interlinked mm-hmm. was Winter Soldier and then Civil War happened. And it was just—it's just so sad to see where they're at now. To be honest, yeah, 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 it does really suck. It's like I just 
I just, I just don't have any more hope for Marvel. Oh. But uh, I, I don't either. I, I, I want to have that hope. Yeah. Because you know we all love Marvel. You know superheroes are like, really really good. But it's just it hasn't been looking too hot. It has not been looking too hot, and I yeah, honestly no, don't think it will be for a while. Um. I don't think it's going to be start picking up to maybe like two, three games before the next Avengers um, movies yeah. before the Avengers, because yeah. they got set up Kang. Yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of Kang, his trial is actually happening right now. Is it actually? <laughs> yeah. As it goes, I, like it starts like on like May sixth or May seventh, something like that, and it oh, goes crap. to whenever it ends. So. Oh. I mean, I, I guess good luck, but like, come on, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, it's. Yeah. It's not looking good for Jonathan Majors either, which kind of sucks. So we might be getting a new king. Uh, I, yeah. Yes, I can't see anybody else playing him though, which sucks. I'm fine with John Boyega, when he has his like goatee. Uh, he was in Force Awakens, but because like I was seeing pictures. Oh yeah, he played Finn. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah, 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 yeah. I was interested. I was like, okay. I could, I could see. Yeah, I could see because he kind of looks like Jonathan Majors a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He yeah. kind of does, just like not as like big. Yeah. Like no, I was seeing like fan cast. People want Glenn Carlos to know the guy who plays Gus from Breaking Bad to play Kang. I'm like, mm -mm. bro. I'm he's like, a good villain, but. He's know. a good villain, but like you can't be like, oh yeah, like, you know, like like a villain role of, you know, obviously like African American descent or yeah. just like of like any like. Uh, ah, damn. What's the word? I forgot. But y y you just can't be putting him in mm -hmm. like that. No, he's a great villain. Don't get me wrong. I could see him more as a Doctor Doom, but yeah, not as a uh, not as a king mm -hmm. at all. Um, after the Marvels is, I think Captain America: New World Order. I have hope for that. I want to see that because, like, so like the plot kind of is supposed to be like he's going to be finding new Avengers. Yeah, his whole thing, like a whole new Avengers team. So I I'm interested in that and like I like yeah, I yeah. like him as Captain America. Yeah, yeah same. Yeah, I said yeah. he was getting a lot of hate. I did, but yeah, it's Papa a Doc, dude, from Eight Mile. Yeah, yeah, it's like and it's like it's also that people are so stuck on like oh he's not Captain America. Steve Rogers will always be Captain. America. It's like it's that's over. His arc is over, man. His story's over. You gotta, yeah, you gotta pass the torch. Yeah, no, because what he's been. I think of Chris Evans too. Poor guy probably wants to take a break and play other roles than just Captain America for the yeah, rest exactly. of his life. Yeah. He's been doing that for the last decade. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. He, he's cashed it out. He's made bank. He's made great movies. Oh, yeah. He's made a name for himself, most importantly. 100%. If it, now he can really focus on his career, what he wants to do, passion projects, mm -hmm. other projects he just wants to get. And so that's absolutely good, good for him, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, people just can't, like, like, People just can't let go of a good thing. Like, you know, like, it's okay. It's over, man. Like, just be happy it happened. Yeah. You know? Like, be happy we got perfect casting at one point. I know. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. And, like, because, like, you know, Sam becomes Captain America in comics. Yeah. For a very, very long time. So, like, this is actually very accurate. Yeah. I, I, the thing is with, like, uh, this kind of new phase. Some of it is not accurate to comics, but some yeah. of it is. Yeah, that's what and I'm some of the things that are accurate to comics are getting hate. It's like, like, like get a grip on reality. I know. Yeah. Just, I, I, like he. Like, it it makes me mad. I know. Yeah. He, he does not deserve the hate that he's getting. Not at all. And it's just, I'm I because I do want to see this movie. I I am very excited, and I love that they're calling it still Captain America because he's yeah. Captain America he's Captain now. America now. He has the shield. He has a suit. Mm -hmm. Does he still have the wings on the suit? I can't. I can't. Yeah. Remember. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna be a deadly combo. Just like imagine, like you're like a villain or something, or not even villain, just like some henchman. So you're unloading things, and then all of a sudden, yeah. some like guy with wings is flying, over and a shield just like comes flying full force at you and cracks you in the neck. That's I gonna know. be insane to see. It's gonna be. It's. I'm really excited because it's just there's so much to, just. There's a lot of potential for these upcoming movies, especially Captain America. I'm not excited for Marvels, all this. Yeah. Thunderbolts, kind of iffy on. That'll be next after. Then we'll be... Thunderbolts, what's, what's that? That's like... Thunderbolts is basically a team of like... Oh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's basically like DC's... It's basically Marvel Suicide that's Squad. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was like, it was like a bunch of villains. It's like Zemo, uh, Zemo Widow, Widow's... Bucky. Black Widow's sister. Yep. Um, Yelena, Taskmaster... Uh, Isn't Yelena Taskmaster? Uh, no, Yelena Petrova. Oh, okay. And then Taskmaster is another person on the team. 
Ghost from Ant Man Two. Yeah. And the Russian dude from Black Widow, that played the guy that played Hopper. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've only watched like the first like, I think hour Black Widow. The movie was not good. I fell asleep. Yeah, I don't. I, didn't, I mean, I didn't really mind it. I just never finished it. So I've never fallen asleep on a Marvel movie, but that was the first Marvel movie that I fell asleep on, and I let myself fall asleep because it was, I was so bored. I was so bored. That's that's just when you know it's going down. Yeah. Another thing about Marvel is that a lot of writers, just in Hollywood in general. Oh, writer strike. Yeah, writer strike. So we have a lot of projects, including Marvel projects. Uh, you know, they're coming to a grinding halt. Other projects like Stranger Things, Yellow Jacket, and this other kind of like horror TV show mm -hmm. uh, that I have heard a lot about. A lot of things are like kind of coming to a halt. So who knows when we're gonna get any more of these projects yeah. that have not been fully produced or like like Loki season two. Mm. I think or actually no, I think there's I think they're filming it, not writing it. Yeah. So maybe like Deadpool three. Deadpool three is affected. Uh, what, what what is what is the writer strike? I don't understand. I think it's just like they're mad because like I don't know they're not getting paid enough because yeah I think these move these movies and shows that they that they are helping write they will go on to make. Hundreds of millions and only get like I want to say like maybe even less than a percentage of that. Who maybe get like um betrayed betrayed a commitment to further devaluate devaluing or something the profession of writing. I think that I yeah think that they don't get enough credit or something like that. Yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. A lot, yeah. A lot of the Marvel projects are actually being affected by. It. I know yeah. Deadpool. I saw something about Deadpool a couple of days ago, uh, like that. It was affected a little bit by. It. I don't remember what it was exactly, but Deadpool, the new Daredevil show. Uh, those two, I know for sure, are affected by yeah. the writer strike. And then I did, like you said, Stranger Things. I know something. They did say something on that, but it's. It's it's oh yeah they said Ryan Reynolds can't improvise any lines during Deadpool three during the writing strike and since they're not writing anything right now especially oh they're not letting him improvise yeah uh, I see it because God knows what's gonna slip from his mouth but it's Deadpool <laughs> yeah that's, that's true too yeah but Ryan Reynolds too in general yeah yeah <laughs> he always does funny with his improv yeah it's, that's like what makes Deadpool Deadpool is exactly. improv yeah yeah but it's I wish that I wish that I because I'm like we said we probably weren't being um paid that well yeah and I'm I'm and pretty the, sure they weren't treated the best a lot of writers yeah so like not getting recognition too that's that why too, like, yeah because you gotta think about when like directors write and direct it's like oh my god no this movie is a masterpiece and you know the director wrote and directed and be like oh my god that's wild that guy's mm -hmm. talented but you know when you have a director who just directs like oh wow well, you know like he directed this movie he did good with it he gets the praise he gets the Oscar like Feige, I yeah. don't think Feige writes I think no, he just directs or produces no I, I think I think he's just the producer yeah he's like yeah, he doesn't producer write. in Marvel yeah uh, but you know obviously he doesn't really uh, I mean, he he gets everyone knows who he is. Oh yeah, everybody. But knows like, he's you. kind of more of the behind the scenes guy. That's so yeah, he is. Yeah, he he definitely handles the more behind the scenes things that we don't really like that they don't really talk about. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> obviously there are times where like Feige has had to like say something. I'm pretty sure because like he made a promise about like. Uh, making things starting to go back to quality over quantity. Yeah. I remember we talked about that. I'm pretty sure. But it's it sucks that this is happening. But if we're right about why the writer strike is happening, I respect it. I do respect it because yeah. you gotta something you gotta fight for. You gotta fight for what you yeah. like, deserve. Especially you know? like if you only do get like one shot at life. Yeah, exactly. You, you want to make the shot. most of it, and if you're making great content like content like that, especially if you're working for Marvel, mm -hmm. that is your life's work right there. That is that your is. legacy you are leaving behind. Mm -hmm. And when people watch these movies, watch these shows, not even just Marvel in general, people will remember you that way. You know, uh, say you know like. Uh, Vince Gilligan, guy wrote, he will always be known as the guy who wrote Breaking Bad yep. and Better Call Saul, and that he is just amazing like that. But no one will remember his other small projects he made. Like, he's right now making this one show, uh, 
I'm or it's actually already airing. It's called Lucky Hank. I'm um, watching it with my dad. It's it's just more like a funny comedy show with uh, Bob Odenkirk, guy who plays Saul Goodman. Hmm. Not his best piece of work. Really? It's like it's funny. Like like he cracks a couple of good jokes, but the whole story and like overlaying tone of it, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of it's like it's poo poo. Really? Yeah. It's not really good at all. But no one's gonna remember him for that. Yeah, no. One's They're gonna remember him for Breaking Bad. Better than mm-hmm. Saul. I didn't even know about the Love Hank one. Yeah. Where is it on? Is it on Netflix? AMC. AMC. Yeah, I'm pretty sure AMC. I don't yeah, they did always air on like, AMC. Hey, buddy, you want to come watch this with me? I was like, yeah, sure. You know, like, but uh. Is a sitcom? What? Sitcom? No, it's literally just like a comedy mm-hmm. show. It's like, you know, like, there's like not like, no, like, laugh. It's not like Seinfeld or like, you no, know, any of the others. If I had to compare it to the, sh- to like another show, I think I'd call it, I don't know, it's kind of its own thing. Cause you know how Vince Gilligan does, like, whenever he makes a show, it's like his own thing. Yeah. Is there like moments of seriousness? Like, yeah, um, yeah, some like like here and there, but it's not like you know, like Breaking Bad seriousness. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. probably say like, have you ever seen Atlanta? No, that has a fair like yeah, serious moments obviously, but like it has like really funny moments. Yeah. Um, so like the way you explain it, I kind of think I, I would assume it would be like that. So I don't know if, if the if the jokes aren't landing, then then it is what it is. But yeah, people are always gonna remember him for Breaking Bad. Bad yeah. And it's better call Saul because a lot of the times in okay in movies and shows, sometimes games, a lot of the time the good outweighs the bad. Yeah. For games, it's a little, a little yeah. It's a little because like if there's some really bad parts about a game, even though the game is good, no one's gonna touch that game. Still. Yeah. Not yeah. Like Cyberpunk, for example. Mm-hmm. No, remember how much hype there was around that game? Oh, yeah. I remember when were, I remember the uh, trailer when it came yeah. out. Yeah. Like, Everyone's going ago. crazy. Oh my God, Keanu Reeves is in this too. The game. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like GTA, but like no, like futuristic. You yeah. Know? Like uh, it has like the Ready Player One vibe to it. Mm-hmm. It comes out. I'm watching my brother play. He's like, what? What? I spent seventy bucks on this. That's what I'm waiting for. He's like freaking out. I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm like relax. He's like, I'm not gonna relax. Mm-hmm. He's going crazy, and he's never touched the game since. Same thing with a lot of people. There, yeah. the game was getting a lot of hate. But now I hear people who do did end up going back to the game. Now the game got fixed with multiple yeah. updates, and it's actually a really good game now. Mm. But no one's gonna remember it for that game. Everyone's yeah. gonna remember it for the disaster it was when what it came out. It's it's uh, two things. One, for, for surprisingly enough, I didn't get any any bugs at all. When, and I bought wow. the game on day one release on Xbox uh, Series X, so I was it That's was fine. That's probably why we uh, he had the old Xbox. Mm, oh yeah. yeah, no, yeah. yeah, no, it looked horrible. I tried playing on the Xbox <laughs> One S. Oh man, that was horrible. It was it did not look good. Yeah, no, he had the old Xbox. <gasps> Like, this is garbage. Like, I'm not getting those 70 bucks back. I was like, come on, man. Relax. Yeah, no. it's like, That definitely it. is a new-gen game. Yeah. Like, 100%. And another thing, I was reading up on something, and they were talking about how new-gen, or, like, just new games that are, like, big, recently, they've always gone. Like, the release, like, the first week has always been not the best. Because with Cyberpunk, that was a bug fix. It was yeah. a bunch of bug fixes. Um with Jedi Survivor, actually on PC, there were a lot of performance issues that I had to deal with, and that took him a couple of days to get done. Um, so, uh, my one of my guy, a few, two of my guys tried playing Saints Row. They couldn't do anything with co-op because everything they either got kicked, everything was bugging out, all of this. Same thing with like Dying Light too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it was really because I tried playing that with my uh, my friend. And because uh, me and him love the first Dying Light, mm-hmm. and we would always replay it. Same thing with the first Dead Island, Dead Island, Dead Island, Dying Light Two, Dying Light <laughs> Two comes out, and we're freaking out. We're playing it. We get through like the intro, and then we try joining each other's games. It's just not. Was the performance issues also? Yeah, a lot of performance issues too, uh, especially while climbing. You know the game's very parkour. Yeah, based. very parkour. When you're based. climbing, even though like, if like, you see your guy grab onto the ledge. 
and then you just drop, and you know when you drop, you look up, and there's just like you no know, thirty zombies and like like night hunter zombies like right there. Like, oh, hello! And the next moment, yeah. the game, like decapitated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, the only game that came out on day one that was like didn't have many problems were, was Dead Island Two. Two. Yeah, yeah. That's what I hear. Uh, I hear now the only problem with it. Is that zombies are like kind of like not really spawning in like like, oh, really? like like you'll go to like an area say you'll go to uh, the pier or some the Santa Monica pier mm -hmm. you'll kill every zombie there and then while you're looking around they just like don't respawn and stuff you have to like to leave the area mm. come back and when you come back it's even less zombies than last time oh, that's not good but like, I guess that's kind of makes sense because if this was like real life you know once you clear out your area there's not gonna be like any more zombies yeah. which like I guess you makes might get sense. like some stranglers like, you might get some stranglers you know just you know just like quickly you know bashing like, their yeah. heads or something but like for like a game like that, you're not going for like a realistic real life type of tone. Mm -hmm. You're going for gameplay, action. Yeah. Keep on putting me into it. Keep on putting me into battles tone with that type of game. Yeah. Yeah. And what <clears throat> what else is coming? Oh, uh Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. Oh my god. I, I will say flopped. It flopped, but the story I had fun with and I had fun with oh, the you combat. Played? Yeah. I did not play oh, yeah. it at all, yeah. I, I did I was enjoy never the really combat. Forward to it. When I heard it was in the Arkham universe, I was like I was interested. I remember the trailer, and it was interesting. You could play your. Friends. I like the Court to Owl thing because I love yeah. Court to Owl is just a great villain. Yeah, I and mean, I always loved it. Like when I was watching that show Gotham, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they brought in the court. Yeah, that that show is a very underrated show. Have you I seen know, it? Yeah, the guy who plays Jim Gordon was great. It's insane. He was great. Insane. He was Batman. He was literally yeah, Batman. literally. And it was Harvey, good. we gotta go take. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, this guy's Batman before Batman was. Yeah. He's like. Doing these insane, he's literally fighting Mr. Freeze toe to toe, dude. No bats or anything. He's like, no, he's like, you're going away for a long time, Freeze. He had a slow, yeah. he had a slow burn for a bit though. Like when it first came out, like yeah, yeah, when the first burn. season, because you know, they had to build up everything. Yeah, Obviously, did. the show started with Bruce Wayne's parents getting capped. Yeah, but uh, the sh I liked how the show, even though it did focus on Bruce Wayne, mm -hmm. it focused mainly on Jim Gordon. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, but. I did like Gotham Knights. It was fun playing with friends. The combat was fun. But, again, performance issues. Yeah. I think I think that's just a running theme right now. Yeah. And it's not good. Yeah. You it's know? Not even, what's called back then, a lot of people used to be way more patient. Like, uh, I remember, I don't know if you've ever played any of the Battlefields. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, me and my friends were right now playing. Like, we were like, right now just like replaying Battlefield 5 and hopping into it for the last week. But I remember when the Battlefield 1 first came out, I Ooh. think I was like in fifth, sixth grade. Yeah, what a but, game. What a game. Oh my God, what an amazing game. But a lot of people just don't remember how much bugs it had. Rarely puts you in the game. You get put into a game. Either you die by some guy shooting you from halfway across the map and his bullets traveling through walls. Yeah. Uh, Texture packs wouldn't load in. Uh, if you were clicking like on a plane or a tank that you wanted to drive, it would not let you in, would not let you spawn. Mm. Uh, a lot of performance issues, but people don't remember that. People, even when like the Zeppelin would come in and mm. it start like spinning and everything, I don't know if you ever saw that TikTok or like that meme where it's like they're spewing flames out yeah. onto the field, dude. A lot of performance issues, but people don't remember it for that. Yeah, people remember it for the beautiful, amazing content. Yeah. It was. I think it took them like about like four or five months for them to really fix it and then after that skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah. I actually I I like that one a lot. It it definitely has uh <laughs> cause like I, I love how people talk about how it's like a cinematic experience. Yeah. And all of this. And it it really is, but I also Battlefield Five when that came out was it the most recent one is Five right? No, no, uh, twenty forty two. Twenty forty two, that, that one flopped. flopped. That flopped yeah. hard. Like, but it had, like such a sick concept to it too. Like, like uh, the whole thing, the whole thing, like why World War Three started. Yeah, we uh, the world ran out of resources to you know evenly divide, and you know, obviously countries went to war with each other. Very mm -hmm. little allies for each country. It was like every man for himself. So you were always fighting a different battle, very futuristic tone to it. You had you no know, weather disasters, like tornadoes would just spawn down onto your battlefield. Yeah. Like if that game, if they put in the effort they did with Battlefield 1 into 2042, mm -hmm. you know how insane that game would be? Yeah. Because whenever, cause I, even now when I play Battlefield 5, 
it, it is like a cinematic. Like, you know, you'll be rushing into battle. You'll hear, like, the whistle blowing. Yeah. And both your shells are just coming down, and you're seeing your teammates getting, like, blown to smithereens. It's like mm-hmm. you're actually in a war right there. You're in medic, and you're reviving, and people are like, Tom, yeah. I can't feel my spine. You know, it's like stuff like that. Yeah, I I definitely do like it. But um, that's a little subtopic, too, like yeah. subtopic, too, kind of thing. But just to, like, for, like, five, five, like, six minutes, I want to talk about um, DJ6. Holy oh, God. Yeah, let's go. Uh, so basically, GTA 6, we all know we've been waiting for a very, very long time. Um, but the reason we're talking about it, we're not going to go too much into GTA 6 because this is, you know, we know what GTA is. Like, yeah, we, all, we all know what GTA is. All right. Yeah. No guy played. But this. what they're saying is GTA 6, the budget or like how much the marketing cost is a billion dollars. Billion dollars for a game to produce. That's the most expensive game ever. I don't even think movies cost that much to produce. There's no way they don't. I think maybe the most expensive movie to ever be produced is about like maybe like maybe half a billion. Yeah. But for a video game, that's insane. Ex- expecting a lot. Uh, obviously, we've seen leaks and trailers from it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. far, it looks great. It looks like we're getting kind of like the same like vibe to GTA Five. It was where you can switch between two different characters now. And yeah. uh, the gameplay style is going to be similar to Red Dead's, where you know, you're going to have like a personal vehicle. Mm-hmm. You carry two sidearms on you, two main weapons. Yeah. And which I really like that about Red Dead, how you had that with your horse. Yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too. Like, there's looking, a lot that yeah. you can do. There the map is a looks lot nuts too. Like the leak for the map, it has a little bit of Vice City in there. Yeah. And like you have three cities, right? I think you can go to three cities. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like four or five cities, something like that. Yeah, it's something like that, and it's it's gonna be fun. You know, we, we all loved it. It's been a long, long time. Uh, they're still updating the fifth one. No, they're not. Maybe they're still doing some updates. They're, they're doing online updates. They're yeah. just doing like I think a summer update and then a Christmas update now. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, mainly they are focusing on that, and but then yeah. uh, I know they shelf their remaster projects for GTA Four and mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption One. Mm-hmm. Which don't get me wrong, I would love a Red Dead Redemption One with Red Dead Redemption Two graphics on it. Yeah. That would be amazing. But I would definitely wait for like G- GTA Six for sure. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. uh, percent. Then you want to talk about Payday for a second? Yeah, for a quick second, we have Payday Three. The last Payday Two I think came out like in twenty thirteen, so it's been ten years. Yeah. It's just a fun co-op game you can play with your boys. Mm-hmm. You're literally just going around and robbing. That's literally, you get bank heist, casino heist, uh, <laughs> museum heist, no <laughs> stuff like that. It's just a great game. I can't wait. Uh yeah, it's. I remember playing that with my boys. That game was actually really fun playing with my friends. Yeah. Um, my favorite one was the car dealership one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was fun. I, I always liked the mall one. Mm, yeah, yeah, that was a fun one, too. Uh, I remember when you robbed the nightclub, when you were walking out, the, like, enforcer cops with, like, a full, like, yeah. armor on. Those would wipe, like, half your skull. Like, when you saw those, it's like, all right, two of us are dying. Yeah. I don't know which ones, but two of us are dying. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah it's like, it's... And you'll get to customize your own gun, your yeah. own weapon for the loadout, which whatever you're going to rob... You literally have your own loadout. You get to customize your character, your own mm-hmm. mask, and I think you get to choose your own name too in this one. Yeah, too, uh, yeah. One. There's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of big things coming. Yeah, I'm excited for it. You know, but it's it's it'll be fun. It'll actually be really interesting. And I, since we don't know too much, I don't have too many too many thoughts. But just like yeah, I do want to say that it's 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 pretty good. It's actually, I'm excited. Yeah. It's a very unique game. It's a very unique game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of kind of wanted to get my thoughts on it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you want to do the outro? Yeah, I'll do the I'll, outro, yeah. and you gotta click the button. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later, though. All right. Uh, oh, oh no, right. Here it comes. Give us right. one second, Luke. We're about to. Yeah, I'm about to do a little outro. Okay. This has been episode seven. We have two more with me included, and after that, Caden fully takes over. Actually, it's like episode it, eight. Oh, yeah, this is episode eight. Yeah. So we are going to episode 10 before I, you know, move on to bigger and greater things yeah. in life. And, uh, yeah, next week we have a guest coming on. You want to do that? No, we'll just fill out the form. We'll make a video. Uh, so I will see you later, Nova. Yep, we'll see you later. All right, peace out. Peace out. It's Canadians. It's